Welcome to Cool to Craft. I'm Tiffany Windsor. And I'm Heidi Borchers. The holidays are happening. They are. Don't you just love the holidays? I'm so excited for the countdown. Yes, I love it. And I just, and I, Christmas is my favorite time of the year. What are you creating today? I have a paper lace doily. It's a old vintage Heidi, if that could be possible. <laughs> and Candace Jedrowitz is crafting a barrette. And it's, it's a great way to uh, celebrate the holidays with um, hair accessory. Very cool. And I am reverse painting a plate with holiday ornament theme. So don't go away, we'll be right back. I'm seeing things. I think I'm seeing <laughs> angels. The angels are flying. <laughs> Today's show is all about holiday happenings. I love the holidays. I do too. You know, for our family, holidays have been a little confusing to me over the years because, let me explain myself. Mm, okay. Christmas in July. Mom, oh, okay. <laughs> now I get it. Mom used to uh, dress us up in July, decorate our rooms, mm -hmm. and I would go, is this the real Christmas? Or is this the fake Christmas? But do you remember how why she did I it? I know why, but do you want to tell everyone why? The reason she did it is because when she had her own store, she and she had she was wholesale, so she had dealers that sold her product. So she had to show the dealers what they were doing in July so that they could sell the product in December or November. So or what October. mom <laughs> did is, is mom's designers took our entire house and decorated it. And, and then all the people came through it and looked at everything. And we used to have to stand in our room in our cute little holiday outfit. <laughs> Hello, I'm Heidi and this is my room. And today, <laughs> this is what's on my tree. <laughs> we we had our, our little script. <laughs> and, and we were little. Yeah. I must have been, there's photos, we must have been four and five years old that I remember doing Oh, I this. would say probably even a little bit younger. Picked, oh, I don't child even, labor. I don't even know how they got you to stay in your room so long. That's true. Well, but there's no <laughs> choice. Aline uh, says your mama. Aline says you're working. So. But then after that was done, July, everything was taken down and packed, and then it was brought back out the first week of December, put all back in, so that the um, the public could come through. And I mean, thousands and thousands of people came through our home every year. So in almost dailies, I'm going to put some photos. Uh, I have photos of me standing by some Christmas trees. Do you know if you have any remembering from those tours? Um, I only remember that we were in Better Homes and Garden magazine mm -hmm. and we all we, were standing right, by. Right, right. So yeah. we'll share those in almost dailies. So this is vintage Heidi. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a sweet little angel uh, made out of paper doilies. I originally made this probably 30 years ago and I actually did a lot of craft boutiques. And so um, this was one of the first things that I did for craft boutiques because they were so easy to do and I could get um, a good amount of money for them. So let's take a look. For this project, you need four inch uh, paper lace doilies. They're available in the cake decorating department of your craft store. And we're going to take and cut for each skirt, we're going to cut in half. Now I look at my doily and it has a pattern. I like this little pattern here, so I'm going to make sure that when I go to cut it in half, that I, that's going to be in the center of my dress. This is for her dress. I'm using the Aline's Original Tacky Glue in the gold bottle. And I'm just from the center to the outside edge, I'm putting my glue. If you take and spread it out a little bit, that way it won't uh, ripple the paper and overlap it so that it matches the edge. and set that aside to dry. Next thing we're going to do is we have a 5 8 inch wooden bead and I painted it 
with a flesh color or light pink. We're going to put hair onto the wooden bead. So when I put my needle onto my yarn, I'm going to come up through the bead and continue going in and out. And you need probably about a yard, a yard of the yarn. In and out. until you have it completely covered like so. Now this little top piece, we cut off the bottom, this little top piece is going to be her braid. So I'm just trimming a little bit. Put a little bit of the Aleem's Tacky Glue around this piece and twist it to go into the glue area. Now I want to tuck this little edge into the back of the, the little bun there, so I'm going to trim it, put a little bit of glue, lift and just tuck that in. And there she has her little hairdo. Put a little bit of glue on the end of a toothpick. And stick that in the bottom hole. I'm going to trim this, oh, probably to about an inch and a quarter. And this is now going to go in the top of the uh, dress that we made. Now, if you had glued it where it's closed, then just trim it so that this um, toothpick can go in there. That one needs to be trimmed a little tiny bit more. Okay, on the inside along the seam, that, that seam is going to be in the back. I'm going to put a little bit of glue, and that's where the toothpick is going to go inside. Put that aside to dry. And we'll work on our wings. From the other half that you cut, you're going to cut out your wings, and all they are is simply just, again, finding the pattern that you want. This particular one works really well because I can just cut the circle, just kind of go along and cut the circle or the rounded edge, and then there's my wing. So you need um, two little wings, and then I use this inside piece that's left over, cut it off, and these are going to be my sleeves. this in half, and you might want to trim off some of that ex excess to make it where it's a little bit prettier edge. And put a little glue on the edge. And if I have too much, again, I don't want the, the paper to, to ripple, so I'm going to have a little bit too much there. You're going to fold that over you're not gluing the toothpick. The toothpick is just helping you to fold that sleeve edge to edge. And there you have one sleeve. So you want to make another sleeve, like so. So we're going to put, let's put her right there. And her sleeves are ready to put on. I'm going to put a little bit of glue. Right on the end, I'm going to make sure that her 
her stick is in the back, just put it at the side here. And the other one to the other side. And she has her sleeves and the wings that we cut for her we're going to cut off just a little bit just cut off the end, the tip end of them put glue on the end and put it right back behind her Now, we need to put a face on her, and I'm just using a um, permanent liner, or permanent pen, fine line. We're going to put a couple little dots for her eyes. And remember, always start smaller. And now she's happy. And to finish her up, we want to put a hanger on her, so I've tied a little piece of um, silver th uh, metallic thread. I have a knot down here at the end, and take it and push it through a needle. Come up through her hair. Put some glue right on that knot. Pull it up in there and let it dry. And the last thing we need to do is to put on a halo. I'm using a uh, lighting ring. It's one of the little novelty ones that you can find at your craft shop. And we're just simply going to put it at the back. If you need to, lift up a piece of the yarn the hair, stick that in, close it back, put some glue right on that place where it uh, parts, twist it, twist it, and then bring it over like that and let the glue dry. And there you have, let's get her finger and there you have a whoops <laughs> a sweet little angel that wants to tumble <laughs> there you have her cute as can be one for me one for you two for me <laughs> Oh, none for you. I have my angels for my tree. <laughs> These will be fun to put on the tree this year. You know, not only are you, you don't have to just stay with white. There are wonderful uh, different sized doilies in the silver and gold too, which would be really pretty on some trees. And of course, these are in the cake decorating department mm -hmm. at your local craft store. Right. And you can make these larger or smaller, depending mm -hmm. on what size doily that you this start is, with. Like I said, this is a four inch, mm -hmm. and that's what I um, base these on. But um, I just love them. So did I say that? I don't know if you did, but you can say it again. I was going to say they're adorable, but I way have overused that word lately. But they are. They're really cute. So yeah. we love them and they're adorable, <laughs> whether you want to hear that or not. So Candace J today. Candace Jedrowitz is getting us into the holiday mood with hair accessories. And do you like put little bells and such in your hair for the holidays? I used to. I like. I used to even put little bells on my petticoats when I was a little girl. <laughs> well, let's that see. was too much information. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's see what Candace is up to today. Hi, Candace. Hi, Candace. Hello, everyone. Hey, welcome back to my studio of Perpetual Mojo. Today, I'd like to show you a very fun, blingy, jingly accessory for the holidays. Sit back and relax. Here we go.
This is everything that you need to make this really easy barrette. You'll need 32 inches of garland, wire, um, I happen to have a green wire here, and this is 24 gauge, but you could use 26 gauge. Some basic tools, scissors, some lovely little jingle bells, and a barrette. You'll want to start by cutting your garland into alternating five and six bead lengths. I've set my rows of beads alternating five and six because that's how I'm going to attach them to the bread. And now I want to cut up my accent beads and they'll go in pairs of stars but you can use anything you, at all that you want for an accent it just needs to have a middle to it so that when you attach it to the bread the sides will stick up so something interesting and blingy now I'm going to get a piece of wire that is 18 inches. You want to leave yourself a tail. So your first wrap around is going to be done with wire left. You'll want to go twice around and make it fairly tight between the beads otherwise they can kind of go sideways and fall off and you don't want that. And when you're doing the five beads in a row, you'll alternate two on this side, three on that side, and then the next one will be three and two, like that. So line up your six right in the middle. Wrap it around twice, nice and tight. And there's a little bit of space in between there, but that won't matter because you're going to scrunch them all together when you get them ready to go on the bead, on the barrette rather. Okay, there's my five and I've alternated. Here they are all attached and what I'd like to show you is there's a top and a bottom. This is the bottom. You can see the wire running down the middle of it. When you turn it over you won't see that. So now you want to attach it to the barrette. You will take your tail. You're going to give it a twist. You want to make sure to tuck in any sharp ends because you don't want to be reaching back there and get poked. Okay, so now I have an end attached and I want to make sure that I'm attaching the barrette with the long wire on the bottom towards the barrette. Now you can see here how much I have left over so that doesn't matter though. You're going to go through with the other end of your wire making sure that it's facing the right way you're going to wrap that around okay and then you're going to use your fingers to kind of compress it and bunch it up so that it's all going to fit and then you'll go back over it and stitch it to the barrette. So I'm going to go hmm, about the third row of beads. One, two, three. I'm going to go across it. Right across 
the wire that attaches the third and fourth row of beads. Now I know you're thinking, how can she tell where she is? Well, I can't. I have to go back and look again. <laughs> okay, first row, second row, third row. So I'm going to go between. Be careful not to catch any of the sticky outy beads because you'll need them to stand up. I'm coming under. I'm going over. Now I have trapped the wire that connects the third and fourth bead rows together. And then I'm going to pull it tight, just like you would a stitch. Okay, then go two or three more rows, making sure that it's facing the right way. Okay, that came loose, so I needed to tighten it up again. Okay, I did not catch anything in there. Good, good, good. So now I'm going to go two more rows, cross over, stitch under without catching any sticky outy beads, and pull it tight. Now, if, you've, if it's loosened at all, you, you'll be able to see that. And you'll just pull it tight. And then go every other row all the way down, scrunching, scooching as you need to. I've finished stitching my beads onto the barrette, and I only have a little tail left. So I'm going to wrap it around the wire that I have attached to the barrette. Okay, next we want to add our decorative pieces, our accents, and so you'll get another bit of wire, probably not 18 inches this time, maybe a foot. You will attach it at one end. And I'm going to go through the loop, through the hole in the end of the barrette rather. I'm going to come around the first two rows and there they are. And I'm going to twist that to tie it off. Trim off the excess, tuck in any pointy, sticky little wires. I don't want to start right at the end, so I'm going to go through the wire that attaches the first few rows together. Make sure that my wire here does not knot up. Okay. And here's how you're going to attach the accents. you are going to go somewhere in the middle. It's an odd number, so it doesn't really matter. It's an odd number of beads between the stars here. And you're going to want to go around it at least twice, or as I said earlier, um, it can turn sideways and come off. So there's one. And you'll see that when I weave it through, that it will suck the middle down be careful not to capture any sticky outy beads. Come on through. It pulls the center down and sticks up the outer edges. So just repeat that all the way down. Get it as close as you can, but it doesn't really have to be too close because you can scrunch the wire. To start your bell wire, you will go 
through the wire that attaches the rows of beads onto the barrette. And you'll twist it several times. And you'll add your first bell. Let's see, I did I did gold on the outside. Twist it again. Cut off the excess. Pick up another row of wire going underneath the beads. I've added the last bell and tied it off and now it's ready to wear. When you are finishing this up, make sure that you've pulled any beads that want to go underneath to the side. And if you need to, you can wire them back up. There you go. I love that sound. I hope that you're inspired to try something like this and there could be many applications for it. You know, it could be done in any colors for any occasion. I hope that if you do try it, you'll show me, send me pictures at CandaceAtQuiltCraft.com so I can post them on our website. Stay crafty, my friends. And thank you. Back to you, Tiffany and Heidi. It's great how you can just take one little barrette and that just uh, screams the holidays. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. it, you know, makes you, me, it makes me want to wear it when put back my hair and put a bread in. Well, if you don't want to get all dressed up, but you do mm -hmm. want to get into the holiday spirit, I think it's a great, oh, great I think thing so too. to do. Mm -hmm. So I have really been hooked on reverse painting. Boy, have you. <laughs> Here it is. You know, I came out into your studio the other day because I was gone for a day or so. And I came out and I'm like, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Look at her go. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, you inspired me for two parts of the project today. One of them is going to be in Almost Dailies, which is the tablecloth that you created mm -hmm. that um, you have to get the Almost Dailies to, was that, to see was that. Was that in the, the big book or the other one I told you? Oh, it was in or a book. big, I don't know, it's in big <laughs> book of crafts or holiday crafts. Okay. I don't remember. <laughs> we'll research that and let you know. But anyway, my project today is reverse painting on a plate. And this is so easy because you can just take any sort of coloring book type drawing mm -hmm. and just paint right onto the back of a plate. Want to see? Yes, and then I have a question afterwards. Okay. The first step in this project is to pick your clear plate. They are a little bit different, and I want to point out to you what you should look for. As you can see, these two plates are very similar in size, but this one has a very definite flat back to it, which is smaller. This one does not have that rim on it, so it gives you more of an area to paint on. This plate I found at my local independent craft store. The other plate I found at a thrift shop. So if you want to find a glass plate that's specific for this type of technique, check at your local craft store and see if they carry these larger broader backed plates. This was in a section where they were showing how to do reverse collage. The next step is to be sure that you clean this completely with alcohol. You want to wipe off any residue and fingerprints. And we're going to be working on the back side, but of course I like to clean the front side too. You can come back and clean the front, but it's nice when you're working to have both sides clean. So be sure that you clean it very thoroughly with your alcohol. Just rub it off with a paper towel. And then you are ready to work. 
You can find patterns from all sorts of different sources. There are certainly pattern books. You can find patterns from coloring books. This was a pattern that my sister Eco Heidi had created for one of her books. So it gave me the choice of a small or a large ball. I added the lines onto it because I wanted to put a lined pattern onto my Christmas ball. I am just using the blue tape to hold my pattern in place. So pattern side down on the front and just use your blue tape to tape that right down to the plate. And my choice on this was to actually offset the ornament down just a little bit on the plate. You can certainly place it wherever you would like to. I'm using the Tulip Slick dimensional paint to actually trace the lines. This project is very, very easy because you can just trace the lines. I always like to test my slick paint first. Sometimes there's a little bit of separation to begin with. You might get a little bit more of like a clear liquid. So make sure that you test it to make sure that you're getting the, the pure paint out. And the next thing you do is you just start tracing your pattern. If you go on just to a test piece of like wax paper first, that's always helpful. That gives you an idea for how much you need to squeeze your bottle, how much control that you have for squeezing out as consistent a line of the paint as possible. The other thing is you want to be sure that you use a full bottle to start with because you, if you don't, then you may need to continue to shake it down so that you don't have any spatters or sometimes it kind of spurts out at you when an air bubble gets in. So be sure that you have a nice full bottle of paint to start. So as you can see, that's very, very easy to just trace your lines there. Straight lines, oh, I think they're a little bit more difficult. But again, don't worry if they're not exactly perfect. That's what's fun about this project. This is handmade. This is not about being completely perfect. Some of my lines are a little bit thinner. Sometimes where I'm starting back up, they're a little bit thicker but I'm not going to worry about that at all. If there's other patterns you want to put on here besides just straight lines, you could certainly draw anything that you want to. It'd be fun also if you wanted to put names on. Just remember you're working in reverse, so when you set up your artwork, you need to make sure that that is set up correctly. Now that I have finished putting my actual design on, on my finished example, I also went in and just put polka dots around the entire plate. So I'm going to continue, finish up my polka dots, and then this needs to set aside to dry completely. It depends on your weather, where you are, as to how quickly this paint is going to dry. If I were making a whole set of plates, I would let them set aside to dry overnight and wait to do the next step until this paint is completely dry. So I'm going to finish up here and then I will show you the next step. I've left my plate to dry overnight, so now we are ready to take the pattern off and take a look at the black lines. Sometimes you need to come back in and use a craft knife and just clean up some of your lines. If I press the tip of my paint applicator too much into the plate, sometimes that means that I'm getting more of a split line rather than a solid line. So I come back in and just use my, my craft knife and clean up any areas that I want to. 
The next thing is to start painting and I always recommend that you use glass paint for a project like this. When you have glass paint it means it's going to be more durable and so if you don't have glass paint you can try regular acrylic paint but remember it's always handcraft hand wash so you have to be very very careful when it comes time to actually wash your plate. You just use a soft brush to start applying your paint. Now this is going on the back side of the plate inside the pattern lines that you have just painted. And I have found that it definitely takes two to three coats of paint to get the coverage that I like. The first coat you can see the brush strokes the second coat helps that, and the third coat really gives you uh, a nice opaque coverage. So don't worry too much about this first coat of paint, but definitely get into the corners. It's very easy to miss one little spot in the corner, and it's okay if you paint over the black line because you're not going to see that. Try not to overpaint at this point also because you can, you just end up pulling the paint right back up. So one coat, let it dry completely, and then apply at least another coat. And sometimes it takes three. It depends on the color too. Some colors give you a lot more coverage. I love this technique because you don't have to be real careful about when you're applying the paint. As I mentioned, you can go over that black line because you're not going to see it from the front. So let's turn this over and take a look and you can see how that's starting. I am going to continue to apply my paint to the entire back of the plate. I have finished painting my plate with several coats of paint and now it's time to finish off the back of the plate with a final coat. I like to use just black paint and you could also use gold, that would be very pretty. It just gives me one more layer of sealing on the plate. So I'm using my black and I just start brushing it over the entire back of the plate. Covering all of the areas. And again, I would put a couple of coats of the black or the gold paint onto the back of the plate. Really let this paint dry in between the coats because you'll pull up the layer underneath it if you don't do that. So finish applying your overcoat paint to the back of your plate and then you are ready to serve some lovely holiday treats on your ornament plate. Something else that I created to match my plate is this placemat. And what I did is I used the Aline's Fabric Fusion Peel and Stick Sheets to the back of fabric and then I just peeled that liner paper off and put the pieces of fabric, just like an applique, just peel and stick right onto my placemat. Once those are down, you use your same Tulip Slick paint to draw around the outside edge. Let that dry completely and now you have a beautiful matching set for your holiday. So we'll see if Heidi can remember the question she was going to ask me. Yes, I can remember it. Duh. <laughs> I was going to ask you, where did you get the plate? I got the plate. Well, actually, <laughs> depends which stack. 
This specific oh. one I got from the local craft store. <laughs> But Heidi went into her stash, as she always does. And can you see this, the stack yeah, over there? Know, yeah. I still have them. I This one gave me a broader base. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you have the, the smaller space in the center. Because it has a little bit of a rim around Right. Mm -hmm. And so at the craft store, my local craft store, which is the independent craft store, they had these that have a much broader. Oh, cool. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. And they were showing how you actually reverse collage onto these mm -hmm. and so they specifically purchased them in the store for that I love that purpose. Very cool. So I it's I you can have as much fun as I did with playful colors mm -hmm. and design or you can do something very, very traditional. Mm -hmm. It looks pretty traditional though even though it's a play with colors. It does, except traditional, I don't know, has that, that apple green in it or not. I don't know if you no, consider I'm thinking that. The, I'm thinking or the purple. purple. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do anything in traditional colors. But, but what's traditional anymore? The only thing I can uh, think of traditional is red and green. Right. So that's vintage. That's old. Oh my gosh, that's ancient. <laughs> so traditional is old. <laughs> I don't understand all. There's traditional, there's vintage, there's antique, and I know that there's a certain number of years that have to pass. So I think uh, it's does just that mean, whatever color you want. Does that mean we're antiques or we're vintage? <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> we're, we were talking about that a while back. What is considered vintage? I know. And what is considered antique? And I think somebody said if it was over 20 or 25 years, it was considered vintage. But if it's always over 50, then it's an antique. Hmm. I don't know. We won't even say what we we'll are. Just, <laughs> <laughs> we're vintage. We'll just pick whichever one we want to be today. <laughs> In any color we want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you are just joining us and you missed the earlier demonstrations in today's show, Heidi was first up. I was making a sweet little angel made of uh, paper doilies and uh, very, very cute. Just cutting the doilies apart and a sweet little head made on um, a wooden bead and a fun way to use a, a wedding ring for her halo. I love those. I'm, I'm an angel lover and I just think these are so adorable to hang on a branch. Mm -hmm. You can do all sorts of things with them. Little package toppers. Oh, definitely. What mm -hmm. else? You know, if you don't even want to do them in the season, wouldn't it be cute for a little bride? Adorable. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's that word again. There's that word, adorable. <laughs> yes, they would be lovely for that, honey. <laughs> Candace Jetrowitz is getting us into the holiday spirit with a holiday-themed barrette. This is a quick way to let everyone know that you are celebrating the season. And what did you do? I created a reverse painted plate with a holiday ornament theme and a few polka dots sprinkled in there. And a couple stripes here and there. Yes, so it's a quick way to make a little presentation plate uh, I always want to remind you that whenever you're doing your reverse painting, it's hand wash. Mm, doesn't oh. doesn't matter if the paint says that you can wash it, dishwasher, or whatever. whatever. I would always, if it's handcrafted, I hand wash. And I always say the same thing. I always say the same thing if you're doing anything that's wearable mm -hmm. or for your, your home decor. If you put all that hand time into it, it definitely should be hand washed. Right. And it's so easy to just take a sponge and wipe these off and just mm -hmm. carefully dry them. So that is what I created. It's time to talk about Facebook. Okay, I guess that's up to me since she looks at me like, no, your I, turn. I can, well, let's trade <laughs> off today. Let's see if you've been listening to me all of these weeks. Okay, be sure that you go on to our Facebook. It's facebook.com slash cool to craft. And you can like us, like, hit the little like button. Um, check out all the different things we do because we really keep it updated um, at pre pretty much every day mm -hmm. and definitely on our um, days that we, we do the, um, the shows. But um, Oh, on Mondays, I'm really active on the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. She's so busy, you can't even talk to her on Monday mornings. <laughs> <laughs> you try, I, I text her on my phone and she's like, you don't even hear from her until she's done with her Facebook stuff. I know. It's, you you got to do it and but I got to so keep good, in touch so with everyone. With, you're so good about that. Uh, let's see. Okay, what else? Oh, turn. it's my turn. Let's see. Um, I'm yes. so I'm so backwards. The newsletter. Okay, <laughs> go to cooltocraft.com, and in the upper right hand corner on the home page, you can sign up for our newsletter. That's the Cool to Craft Fave Crafts newsletter, and that comes out every Tuesday and Friday. I have to remember. <laughs> Hi, I rely on Heidi to remind me when that comes out. Every Tuesday and Friday, you get a newsletter from Cool to Craft, and we put together a whole collection of creative ideas. Around, on Tuesdays, it's around the theme of our mm -hmm. show, so you'll see the links to the projects 
that were on today's show, but I also go to faithcrafts.com and pick out some of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And then there's one other newsletter that you ha you cannot pass up because you can only get it you can only get it on coolercraft.com, and that's almost dailies, and that's where we give you some little special information. You know, maybe we've made some things. Um, like this, like it's this, going to be okay. On See? almost daily, and you know, or we have some little bloopers or something, something like an add-on or a, a aha or something. Be sure you subscribe to the Almost Dailies. It's a newsletter that comes out well, not every day, but almost day. Did, did, did I hear you say we? We do this and we do that. <laughs> yeah. I like how you included yourself in that. Does that mean one, something's coming? Once in a while, I do <laughs> submit. <laughs> show, show. Threaten me. I do. Heidi, you have to come up with something that's almost daily. Yeah, I did well, recently. Have you made anything else with paper doilies that we could include in this week's almost daily? Oh, gosh, I have to think about it. We'll that. find something. <laughs> we'll absolutely find something. So that means that you've gotta you've gotta check it out and go to almost dailies to see what I decided to show you. So the holidays are happening. It's been a great show. Love yeah. all of the ideas on today's show. And it's getting me definitely in the spirit. Me too. It's going to be fun too this year with uh, Tiffany being right next door. Because um, I have about a half a shed back there with Christmas decorations. Oh some gosh. that she left over the over the years for me to store. And she's going to be, it's going to be like oh my Christmas gosh. all over again. Oh my gosh. I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Oh, can't wait. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us Thank today. You. Get creative. Get inspired. Be, Be cool. Bye-bye. Happy holidays. Bye. <laughs> A little bit early. <laughs> <laughs>